Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me, everybody, for another Tuesday discussion. Here on Tuesdays, we do like to make content generated by comments and questions we get from the community, either here in YouTube, on Patreon, or over in Instagram. Now, today's question, ah, it threw me for a loop a little bit. It actually took me quite a bit to come up with my answers and the reason behind these answers. But the question that I got is, what are the whiskey brands I am looking most forward to in 2024? And I actually found this to be a very difficult question. There is something about the way the last two years have played out, either with certain brands slowly letting me down, other brands elevating, other brands just disappearing entirely, maybe because they lost their old sourced whiskey that they were making a name out of. But it kind of leaves the whiskey landscape in a weird spot. So then thinking about 2024 and where I want to pick my punches, that was pretty tough. But I came up with five brands. If you've been watching the channel for a little bit, I don't think these brands will come as a surprise. But if you're new to the channel, these might be brands you've never heard before. And I'll let you know why I'm looking forward to trying them in 2024. So thank you for joining me today, Whiskey Friends. Let's kick off the show. Now, one of the themes for 2024, if you've seen my recent video on 2024 whiskey goals, but Top Dog made me a hat off of one of the whiskey goals, no floor whiskey in 2024. And essentially what that comes down to is not overbuying, not feeling like I have to buy everything for the sake of FOMO. I don't have to try it all. I can get samples. I can split bottles with people. No matter what I do, though, the point is to actually call down my collection in 2024 to the point that there is never a chance for any floor whiskey around this area, hopefully ever again. But I also plan to build more shelves along this wall, which then I'll fill out immediately is usually how that works. But I'm also trying to spend less on whiskey in 2024. So that all relates but still, when it comes to these five brands, I'm pretty much going to buy them or prioritize them every time I have a chance and every time I see them. Now, it took me a bit to go through these. I'm going to pull the most expensive one out first. But I am looking forward to the Forgate, the Kelvin Collaboration Series. This is Kelvin 5. But the Kelvin Collaboration Series has been my favorite whiskey series since it began in 2020. Still loved the Kelvin 5. That was in my top 10 last year. So looking forward to the Kelvin 6. It's actually been since 2019 that a Kelvin series from Fourgate wasn't in my top 10 whiskeys of the year. Heck, if not my top 5. The next one on the list, really put this on your radar if you haven't given them a chance yet. But I'm going to highlight Hard Truth. They are making some spectacular rise, and the older these get, I have a feeling they're going to get better and better. The ones that I initially fell in love with were two to three years old. So now as we get into 2024, I'm hoping to get to some four-year single barrels. I don't know by the time we're at the end of 2024 for even to the point of five-year single barrels, but their stocks have to be getting older. Hopefully, they're holding some good stuff back for us. So getting some more hard truth single barrels is definitely on my radar. And then the other thing that really stood out to me, I got the batch two of the caramel malt from the distillery a couple months ago. It is remarkably better than batch one. And I loved batch one. I actually got to do a review on batch two here coming up soon. But that'll be another release that I look forward to. I will buy that again if they come out with a batch three this year. Next on my list is going to be Still Austin, another darling of the channel. This is only, you know, two, three-year-old Texas whiskey. It tastes so much older than that. 
Now, what would be interesting to hear from Nancy is how much older they can actually make this whiskey. Are we going to get four-year releases, five-year releases, or is that just too much for the Texas heat? Now, the other thing that excites me about Still Austin is they keep releasing variant mash bills lately. Kelsey has been giving me a few samples of them. I haven't given those a shot yet, but it seems like more and more keep coming. An exciting brand that is experimenting, coming out with new bash bills. I love discovering new things, and I already know that I love. Everything about the base profile is still Austin, and I particularly love who blends it. Next up, this was a surprising one. When I started pulling bottles from the shelf, but I am so intrigued what they will get their hands into in 2024. And that's the guys over at Penelope. Now that they seem to have access to a different level of stocks from MGP, now that they are a part of that company and not just sourcing from them. But this Penelope nine year had to be my one of my surprise whiskeys of the year, if not my surprise whiskey of the year, because honestly, I had no expectations for it. You know, the only other one that stands right next to it's the Copper and Kings. Be interested to try something from them if they're going to keep coming out with stuff. But with this Penelope nine year, I think it really shows what they can blend when they're given the stocks that go beyond just the four year stocks that they were utilizing for so many years. Let's see what this next release is. But man, it almost seems like the sky is the limit here, and I wouldn't be surprised if MGP keeps loading up this brand. I think this is my favorite brand in the MGP umbrella now, surpassing Remus. The next one is one I am really intrigued by, because when I posted the review on this particular bottle, the comments that I got, it kind of blew me away that there's even more out there than I am seeing, so there is so much left to explore. And what I'm talking about is the Bardstown Bourbon Company single barrels. So this particular one that I have in my hand is 78% corn, 10% rye, 12% uh, malted barley. And I also showed that the proof on this one was stamped at 120%. And I wondered if they were watering some of them down, kind of like Knob Creek. Other people started sending me pictures and said, nope, the one I have, the proof is written on it. It came in barrel proof. And then people started giving me all of these different mash bills that they are finding as far as the single barrels are concerned. At six years old, now going on seven years old, now that we're going into 2024, I mean, these picks are just going to get better and better and better. And there's so many variations out there. It's almost like going back and wanting to do all the Four Roses recipes and trying all those all over again. I want to try all of the Bardstown mash bills. And I think that would be a really fun adventure in 2024. So there are five whiskey brands I am prioritizing in 2024. If I see them, I'm essentially going to buy them when it comes to either single barrels or some of their uh, experimental mash bills or variant mash bills. So I will buy these when I see them recommend them to everyone else, and then you'll get to see the reviews here as they come out as well. So let me know in the comments, what are some whiskeys that you're looking forward to trying in 2024? Love to hear it. Maybe you'll put some things on my radar. Maybe there are some things coming out that I'm not even aware of, and you're going to bring that to my attention. So please come in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking, and let me know what you think of these brands. Have you tried them? Is this going to inspire you to try them? Let's keep spreading the word on the good whiskey that's out there, particularly when it comes to a lot of these are all under, you know, $100. You know, the old, real expensive ones, the four gate, but all the other ones are relatively affordable. So just kind of keep that in mind, especially in 2024. I think there are so many brands out there that there really isn't too much point to break the bank very often. Try to keep your whiskey spending in check in 2024 if you can and enjoy the stuff that you have. So thank you for joining me today, whiskey friends. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, no floor whiskey in 2024. Thank you, everybody. Jeff, just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends. And you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends. 
And you say hello again Oh Jeffrey, you Should just be friends with me But you have these whiskey